Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Braden Timmons, and today we are talking about Halloween for the return of Michael Myers. Now, I know some of you guys I've seen some, you know, in my community section and when I've posted, like, you know, the plan for the week and everything. I've seen some of you say, well, I was wondering why the Halloween 4 review was not out on Monday. And I do apologize for that. I know that, you know, I've been pretty consistent within these uh, three weeks in getting these reviews out. I have, obviously, if you guys see the boxes behind me, I am packing up to move. And some of you that have been around for a while, you guys are like, again? You're getting ready to move again? Yes, yes, I am. Uh, there's been a lot of moving parts and just some life changes and everything like that. So uh, getting ready to embark on a new journey. I'll have more details about that later. But today, we're talking about Halloween 4. Ten years after his original massacre, Michael Myers awakens on Hallow's Eve and returns to Haddonfield now to kill his seven year old niece. Dr. Loomis, of course, once again, enters the story played by Donald Pleasance, and he is trying to convince everyone once again that Michael Myers is back and on the loose. Now, Halloween 4 is no doubt one of the more beloved sequels post-Halloween 3. I would say that Halloween 1 through 3 has a pretty relevant following. You know, Halloween 3, I say because I even said in my review last week for Halloween 3 that it has developed a very large cult following since it came out in 1982. I truly do think it is one of the best Halloween films, and I like the idea if they were not going to have Michael Myers in it, I liked the direction that that movie took. This film had a big, big challenge, and that was to bring back Michael Myers into the story. And that was obviously due to the negative reception of Halloween 3. So, Mustafa Akkad, who ended up getting the entire rights for the Halloween franchise, said that they needed to bring back Michael Myers, but it needed to kind of go back to the roots. Halloween 4 was meant to kind of go back to what made Halloween, well... Halloween and Dwight Little came in to direct and I thought that his direction was a pretty good update I don't think that it really emulated what John Carpenter did with Halloween like Rick Rosenthal came in and directed Halloween 2 and I thought that that direction was absolutely great because if you watch Halloween and Halloween 2 it really feels like the exact same type of thing and I also do think that that had to do with Dean Cundy the director of photography at the time he had worked on Halloween and Halloween 2 so the style they it very much emulated each other and i thought it was absolutely great halloween 4 now that michael myers is being brought back into the story and the film takes place 10 years after the events of the original we have to do some catching up here you know loomis he still is trying to convince people that michael myers is alive and he's now on the loose again and there's a lot of things in this movie that does yes go back to the roots of halloween it pretty much has everything that you would want or everything i shouldn't say everything that you'd want it has the basic trope to a Halloween movie. So it's like, you know, we see Jamie Lloyd, uh, who's played by Danielle Harris, who is very good in the movie, and we'll get into that here in a couple minutes, but Jamie is getting bullied at school. Loomis is convincing everybody that Michael Myers is back. Michael Myers is being transferred from, a, from one facility to another on Hallow's Eve, because that's just a typical trope with the Halloween movies. We see that. I mean, th while this is the first Halloween movie to really pick up on that since the original, it since has become a very large trope in the Halloween franchise. Like, you know, Rob Zombie's Halloween does that. Halloween 2018 does that. It's just something that we constantly see within this franchise. And I will say, George P. Wilbur, who does play Michael Myers in this movie, I'm also not really much a big fan of the way that he looks as Michael Myers. I mean, sure, he's tall and everything, and yes, he does look kind of scary in some scenes, but one of the things I'm going to say right off the bat is the mask really does take you out of this movie a little bit. I know that it's something that a lot of people and a lot of fans don't really like is the mask of this movie. The mask, in my opinion, has grown on me over the course of how many times I've seen this film. I actually do like it more and more every time I see it, but I do know that it is a very big turnoff. And George P. Wilbur also actually wore hockey pads underneath the Meyer suit, which is why in some shots, especially towards the end, he just looks very blown up. And that 
in my opinion, is just kind of a turnoff for, you know, the character Michael. In my opinion, he's always been very, you know, stealthy and the way that he walks and everything. And in this movie, he feels like the actor. It's nothing against the man, but he feels more stiff than he has in the entire franchise at this point. I mean, the way that he moves, he like walks kind of like with his arms out. He like turns like he has to literally turn his entire body to look at his victims and everything. And he's just very stiff that and again nothing against the guy i like how menacing myers looks in some scenes but in my opinion just overall he's just very stiff in this movie but more on michael here in a little bit let's talk about our main characters now so let's talk a little bit about the whole jamie lloyd and the rachel characters now jamie is living with her foster family and rachel is playing like her sister-like figure they're not really sisters but they are kind of like sisters you know it's like the way that they interact it's like they're technically siblings but we do find out what happened but uh with laurie strode within these last 10 years is she did have a daughter and then after the accident that laurie goes through she ends up living now with this foster family who is caring for her and I will say, I think Daniel Harris does a very good job with everything that she is given. I think that the way that she interacts with, you know, all of these elder characters, I mean, she was the youngest one on set. And that is one thing I do like. The cast and crew, they always made it seem like, you know, that this was a movie. They made sure that she was taken care of. They made sure that she was comfortable with doing what she was doing. And between the scary scenes, George P. Wilbur, who plays Michael Myers, would come over to her and make sure that she knows that this is just a movie, that, you know, there's no reason for her to be afraid of anything. And I do really think that that really makes a kid feel comfortable on set. So I really did like when I was reading a little bit about the history of this movie, that they actually, that the cast and the crew took time to make sure that she was comfortable because at the time, again, she was just a kid and ellie cornell is rachel i think that she's fine as a character her motivation is honestly mostly to just try to get with this boy brady throughout the course of the movie so i mean her character development she definitely has some throughout the movie is it the greatest character development no her motivation kind of goes back and forth between just wanting to get with brady and then pretty much having to take care of jamie and eventually you know all of them collide as characters and i think that everything is fine a lot of these characters really just kind of create the body count for michael myers in this movie and i do think that some of the kills in this movie is the best of the franchise i also think that this movie is very very self-aware about where this franchise could have gone now one thing i also do want to touch on is that this is the start of the cult of thorn trilogy even though that this movie doesn't really hint at thorn until the very end of the film this is the start of two films that follow that don't really get a whole lot of love out of the thorn trilogy halloween 4 i definitely will say is the best but the kills in the movie is absolutely great like the the way that this goes, the way that it plays out, it honestly feels like that Halloween 4 brought a little bit of fun to the franchise. Like some of the ways that Michael Myers kills his victims, like the way that he kills Kelly in the movie, I absolutely love. I think that the way that he grabs the shotgun and he just sticks it right through the freaking wall, she sticks her right through the wall with it, even though we all know what you can do with a shotgun. You can take the shotgun, you can blow someone to bits with it, but no, Michael Myers, he doesn't do that shit. He takes the barrel of the shotgun, sticks it right through her, and leaves her hanging on the wall. There's also a scene with a gas station that I think is very entertaining, and Loomis jumps through a pile of garbage as the gas station and the gas pipes and everything, they explode. There's just a lot of fun campiness to this movie. And speaking of Dr. Loomis, let's talk about some continuity errors that he has. And this has a lot to do with reshoots. But if you look at his scars from what is to be from the Haddonfield Memorial Fire from 1978, that has some continuity issues throughout the course of the movie. Because in the beginning, it looks very like out there. And throughout the course of the movie, it kind of just looks like it's been and gotten a little bit more smooth over the course of what? like 12 hours that this movie takes place and that does have to do with reshoots michael myers actually also has a scene in this film where he has white hair and my biggest question becomes is why could they not replicate the michael myers mask from 
Halloween 1978. I feel like that it has now, from this point on, become such a damn struggle to freaking replicate this mask, even though it's the cheapest Halloween prop that you can probably ever find. It's literally a William Shatner mask, spray painted white, you cut off the eyebrows, you freaking cut off the sideburns and everything, and I feel like you can kind of recreate it, but for whatever reason, people struggled so hard to create that iconic mask again. You know, and that's why it looks different from here all the way until really Halloween 2018. It's like a different mask, and that's a big continuity error. I feel like if they would have tried to replicate the same mask in all of these films and get somebody that looked at least like that they could have been Michael Myers, uh, I do think that these movies would have been a lot better, Halloween 4 included. Because Halloween 4 is a very entertaining movie. It's got a great Halloween atmosphere. And it's also, let's talk a little bit about the music here. Alan Holworth now composed this sololy. In Halloween 2 and Halloween 3, he had been in association with John Carpenter. But having spoken with Dwight Little, the director of this film, he ended up composing this single-handedly. And I do think that his score is a very good update. I think that there are some cues from Halloween 1978 and Halloween 2. Obviously, he had to bring back in those musical notes from working on Halloween 3. That was completely different. But I do like his score of the movie, and I think it works well with the atmosphere that is being presented. Again, Dwight Little's direction, I think that it was unique to his own vision. He didn't really direct very many films prior to this. He had like two films that really were nothing films and this was his first big credit so i do think that for what he was able to bring to the halloween franchise like he has the classic pov shots he kind of brings his own aesthetic to the halloween movies and i appreciate it you know it's a different director so you want to make sure that they're giving their vision and i'm glad to know that this movie does have a very good following to it i like the story and alan b McElroy, the screenwriter for this movie only had 11 days to pitch, create, and write a final draft for this movie. He had 11 days to do this, and I do think that the script and the story that he was able to come up with in 11 days, even though there are a cascade number of drafts for this script, including the Dennis Etchison script, which I have talked about on the channel in the past, um, I definitely plan on recovering that on the channel in the future. I do want to talk more about the Lost sequels, but I'm trying to plan for that post-Halloween ends. Um, I do think that what Alan B. McElroy was able to do um, within 11 days to develop this was a damn good job. You know, I think that it, it's going to be impossible almost for any writer to be able to do that. But I do think that the way that he was able to develop this and really create this final draft in the time that he had, I thought that it worked. And I thought that the kills are great in this movie. Donald Pleasance is absolutely awesome as always, even though he's pretty much the same character as he was in Halloween 1978. And I will say also Sheriff Meeker, I do like Sheriff Meeker as a character a lot in this movie. I thought that if they were going to have to have that, you know, buddy cop thing with Dr. Loomis and a sheriff, I thought that Sheriff Meeker was a good update from Brackett. Even though Meeker is definitely more of a hard ass, in my opinion, than Brackett, uh, I just like his character a lot. I think that the way that uh, the movie plays out and the way that that whole thing is introduced and even introducing the idea of the mob that is going after Michael Myers that kind of later took more shape in Halloween Kills than it did here. I Again, this just kind of goes back to the fun campiness that brings to Halloween 4 and I do really like Halloween 4 like I said. I think that it is definitely one of the better Halloween sequels. Next week when we start talking about 5, we are going to start having some major, major issues because I don't really like 5 all that much so I'm very excited about that but love Halloween 4 I think that the way that the story is I think that the direction the music everything kind of feels like a stellar update if they were going to bring this franchise back after 10 years so I'm gonna say that Halloween 4 is a great time and I'm gonna say that it is definitely an avid Halloween partier
So with all that being said, guys, post your guys' comments down below. Let me know what do you guys think of Halloween for the return of Michael Myers. Do you guys love it? Do you guys hate it? Do you guys kind of find it somewhere in the middle? Where would you guys rank it on your Halloween list? Whatever your thoughts are, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you guys like this, don't forget to join me on my journey to 10,000 subscribers. And I will see you guys in my next video.